Thursday edition, we head on down to Cheyenne, Wyoming, where Amy Edmonds is standing by from Wyoming Liberty Group to tell us all of the wonderful things that the federal government is planning on doing uh, to uh, indoctrinate, I'm sorry, help your kids in their future. And don't worry, billions of dollars spent will not be wasted. Is that right, Amy? Am I nailing it? Oh, I don't know if I'm going to say exactly that. Okay. Just trying to be helpful here and optimistic there. Okay, you're a buzzkill. What did Congress do now? So we just saw the final um, passage of the reauthorization of No Child Left Behind, which is the reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. You almost need a flow chart to keep track of these things, Glenn. But uh, yesterday, the Senate... Uh, uh, voted the final approval the house had voted last week so the new reauthorization called every student succeeds act or essa we love our letters um is now the law of the land okay now now when you have an act like this when it when it, what you do is you take something old that has already failed that has cost us billions of dollars and either didn't do anything or actually made things worse but don't worry if you just spend billions more doing the exact same thing, but give it a different name, it'll work this time, right? You nailed it. Okay. Um, that's what this is. So what we see is the federal government doubling down on, on what we know has been a failure within No Child Left Behind, which is this whole uh, testing accountability scheme. So No Child Left Behind was created under... I think one could say an admirable idea by President Bush that we needed to push back against, you know, the quote unquote soft bigotry of low expectations in many of our many, many, many failing public schools, particularly in inner cities. Um, but to do that, they wanted to try something totally different, which is this whole accountability. We're going to test kids. We're going to hold teachers accountable. And, and um, somehow we're going to get everybody proficient by 2014. That simply didn't happen. Okay, it, now, it, now, uh, let's start with the idea, because that idea sounds great to me, that we're going to hold teachers accountable and we're going to test everybody, including the teachers. I mean, uh, when, when you look at that idea, would you have a problem with that? Well, um, to a certain extent, here, here's what I agree with. I agree with the, the outrage that comes from knowing that we have schools, even in our own state, but all over this country where students are sitting, where they have you know 10% completion rates, where, where the only expectation in that school is going to be abject failure. Everyone should have a fire in their belly about that. I don't fault President Bush for having a fire in his belly. Absolutely. The solution, however, is not a piece of legislation from Congress. The solution is to allow parents to leave that school. Okay. So, what, in other words, what you're saying here is the top-down from Washington, D.C. idea is what you're objecting to. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. To, I, I get the fire in the belly, and I think we all should be extremely angry at the failures that we see in public education because education, as we know, is fundamental and is incredibly important. However, looking for more solutions in the same place that the last solution you found failure in the last solution is probably not the best idea. All right. Let's take a look at some of what they did here. Uh, you wrote in your article, $1.1 billion for 21st century community learning centers. Here, I'll go ahead and say community indoctrination centers. Now, community learning centers, what does that mean? So this is part of um, a whole package of, I, the best way I can describe it, if you go down the list, you'll also see we've got $10 million to restart this parental information and resource center to engage families in education. So 21st century community learning centers is about 21st century. Remember, the common core on all the testing was about creating a 21st century workforce. So, so this is all about thinking in the future, we're going to train up these kids to do whatever the jobs 20 years from now are going to be, and we've got to engage parents and get them involved. So this is more of that. Okay, but how do you get parents to show up in the first place for something like this? I mean, you, you can build the center. It's not necessarily you build it and they will come. Well, I think you'll have to tell the federal government that, Glenn. Okay. I don't know that they've figured that out yet. <laughs> $2.3 billion to continue supporting defective instruction in the classroom. So if we throw $2.3 billion at the classroom, then the teachers will just be more effective. Is that how that works? Or is there a, well, is there a plan here? 
That's what they're hoping. What's interesting, uh, tied up in that is is a little bit of controversy. Well, it's quite a bit of controversy, actually, in some of these, in this uh, teacher effectiveness, teacher instruction, educating teachers. So one of the things that they want to do is encourage states through their Title II funds, which is part of, of all this big package of money we're talking about, in their Title II funds, to create these um, academies. So these learning academies for teachers. What's interesting, and I think what's causing a lot of controversy, is that the academies are um, focusing on creating uh, learning uh, mentoring with teachers who are actually growing students, but they're not necessarily, these centers are not going to be tied to any school of education, so they wouldn't necessarily be tied to the University of Wyoming School of Education, um, and they aren't tied to all of the different um, teacher certifications and that sort of thing. It's, it's, it's really about internal mentorship, which worries some people. I think the teachers union is adamantly opposed to it. I'm ambivalent. I, I like the idea. I mean, I think a lot of the certification, we know certification and all this other stuff, uh, you know, is, is not the way that you create good teachers. Just because they're certified does not mean that they're an excellent teacher. Um, so in that sense, I like it, but I think in another sense, here we have the federal government in, you know, incentivizing states right. to do these things, and they could be used for all kinds of purposes in the future that uh, I think a lot of folks would not approve of. In other words, training teachers to teach certain curriculums that the local school boards may not approve. All right. Talking with Amy Edmonds from Wyoming Liberty Group about uh, billions being spent to help the schools out, which never seems to help the school out, which is why she and I are a little bit cynical about this. So, well, here's what bothers me. If you're going to spend $2.3 billion, there are private schools and charter schools out there with much smaller budgets that are getting much greater results. And so you would think they would understand at some point that just increasing the budget and spending more money on something is not necessarily the solution here. But every time they have a solution, it comes with another budget of billions of dollars. You know, they haven't learned that since 1964. If you, if you look at the graphs, even from some of the center right and center or center left and, and left leaning think tanks across the country who've been honest about looking at, you know, the, the, uh, on a graph, the, the spending, federal education spending line versus student outcome line. And they haven't learned this. You know, the spending line consistently is, is in a, a you know, a, a direction going upward and, and student outcomes is, is, you know, it looks like a heart rate monitor. It's up and down, up and down, up and down. There's there's no great gain. It's it's just back and forth. They have not learned that time, money, it does not mean um, outcomes. Right. $10 million to restart a defunded program that creates parental information and resource centers to engage families in education. Why was the program uh, defunded and now restarted? <laughs> So this was defended in 2002, and I think it just wasn't a priority. See, and again, you know, the list that I put in my blog, this is just a very, this was a small list, okay? Yeah. This is just a few of the things in there, <laughs> yeah. just, just to give people a perspective of the goodies, as I call them, that are in there. This was something that was not a priority under the Bush administration, and now we've come back around, and apparently they had $10 million of somebody else's money they wanted to put in there, so so they did, and and now we're going to see these parental information resource centers pop up. You see, I wanted to know, really, but I don't know if you would know or not, when they had that, that program before and they defunded it, was it because it wasn't working? Are we funding something that they had given up on? Um, I'm not for sure that I, I could say that they would say it wasn't working. Right. It just wasn't a priority. Okay. Now, you'll have to help me out on this one because I saw some time ago a study, uh, and it was a government study on Head Start programs. Yeah. And the Head Start programs, after all of the money that we spend on them to give kids a Head Start, again, sounds like a great idea. We're going to start helping these kids and educating these kids even before kindergarten. We're going to get them going. And then afterwards, the study showed that it had no result whatsoever, not positive, negative, just nothing. Because these kids are at a stage in their development, really, where, yeah, you can go ahead and teach them something, but they'll forget it just a few months later. So you should wait till they develop a little bit more before you sit them down in the classroom. But now we have $250 million for early childhood preschools through Head Start. So in other words, it looks like they're pumping more money into the program. Is that right? Well, yeah, and there's a concern here. I, I added this, and I put a little caveat next to it, as you can see, and um, it's something that I'm 
want to do some research and hopefully get something written and, and can come on your show again and talk about. This, this is an area of actual con- real concern about this piece of legislation because we well, this is the first time that this federal education bill has contained really codified um, childhood early childhood preschools. Um, before it's come through different funding, it wasn't permanent. This is sort of changing, and and the Elementary and Secondary Education Act has never taken on preschool. Okay, so it's been you know since 1964, it's been the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. It's not taken on preschool, so we're headed into that territory that that yes, I think concerns a lot of people, and rightfully so, so because we know we do know nationally the studies. We've seen the Pew Institute has done some really good work here, talking about the outcomes of kids now that we can, you know, we're gen- we can be a generation out and look at kids who got preschool um, and they're now out of school and to see if that actually helped their outcomes or if it improved their outcomes. And really, there's not a whole lot of movement on the bar. Okay. What I would say is people, there are people who are deeply passionate about Head Start mm-hmm. and they think it's really, really important in their communities. I think it needs to be handled in a way that's kept out of the federal government, kept out of the state government and done locally not this is the wrong way to go and and mainly because there's great fear Wyoming when I served in the legislature we had to rebuff several attempts to to codify and 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 try to make not voluntary um, preschool and Mm -hmm. it's that's absolutely not what we should be doing these are children should not be in school that early and it should not be parents should not be forced to put their children if they don't want to okay well do you see when you look at this whole article that you've written here that the federal government was trying to gain more control over local schools or did it make no, no? Okay. absolutely i mean i i talk in here in, in my blog a little bit about so the this new piece of legislation you what you might hear from from folks in your community your local school district might say, this is great. We're so happy this passed because it got rid of AYP, which is the adequate yearly progress, which was part of No Child Left Behind's, you know, accountability. We're going to hold schools accountable. We're going to test kids and then we're going to hold people accountable. That's now gone. But it's not as though the federal government's walked away from the whole accountability scheme. What they've now done is they've now started micromanaging state accountability systems, which I think is really humorous. And I, and I say this in my blog, it is not accurate. It is not even factually accurate for the state of Wyoming to call our accountability plan a state plan. What it is is a federally mandated, federally micromanaged state plan. In other words, we're not creating this Glenn the way we want to. And this bill definitely uh, shows us that because in this federal bill, it tells states some of the things that they have to have in their accountability plan. So they have to tie outcomes to both graduation rates and to test scores on statewide tests. So if you thought you were going to create an accountability plan and look at other things about the students, not just how the students scored on a test or or their graduation rate, no, no. The federal government has said, no, we want you to create a state plan. We want to give, you know, lip service to states having control over their education, but we're going to tell you what you need to have in your plan. And that is so typical. That's what these bills are. That's what they always do. I'm talking with Amy Edmonds from Wyoming Liberty Group. So here's what you think as we go pay some bills. Just think about this. So what about those people who will make the argument, but shouldn't we have some kind of national standards? What's so wrong with at least having some basic national standards, Amy? Okay, well, where do I start? Let me start first. I will start federally and constitutionally. First of all, uh, because it is the founders never intended for the federal government or even the states to be involved in education. Uh, and currently, there are at least three federal laws that prohibit the federal government from getting involved in any kind of standards or curriculum instruction, anything like that. So the feds themselves have said, we're going to stay out of this. Um, so secondly, we assume that somehow standards are appropriate for what we would use to educate a human being. In other words, we standards, we limit ourselves. If we think that writing down a set of standards 
we, is that which will then create a whole human being. We just, we just check the box. Here are our, you know, core areas of instruction. If you read Wyoming's statutes, we, we, we say here's this core area of, of instruction that we think is what a child needs to know. Now, are there things that every child should know and learn? Absolutely. Principles of, you know, geometry and algebra and, uh, yes, that, that is true. But should we limit ourselves to saying, this is what the kids need to know, and that is all? And sadly, that's what has happened with both, you know, just at the state level saying, here's this curriculum core knowledge of, of learning that we need to, to learn for students, and then nationally doing that and tying it to testing. We, we, we are eliminating things, you know, more and more things like arts and music and other things that create whole human beings are leaving the classrooms because they are no longer important because somehow we are arrogant enough to think that, well, if we just have this, you know, set of standards, everyone is going to, you know, come out of the little machine uh, a whole human being. And that's just not true. Well, and then don't different regions of the country have different ideas about what's important for their kids. So in other words, you might go to Boston and find that people in that area think a more of a liberal arts education is the way to go. And that will generate a successful child. And yet, if you come out here to Wyoming, Montana, Dakotas, oh, no, no, no. Go to a trade class and learn some kind of physical labor trade because you're going to need that. Repairing engines, you know, welding, things like that. That's more important to getting a good job. So different regions of the country, different ideas. No, that's right. That's exactly right. And well, people who argue for standards say, well, you know, but this is this is the floor, not the ceiling. You know, oh my gosh, we can just boot, go up from there. And as you say, local regions can add their local flair and they can add the things that they want and they can add this and they can add that. There's only so many hours in a day. And when the federal government and the state government continue this re unrelenting meddling in public education and tying things and creating systems and having more mandates and requiring more things and more things and more things, those, those hours, minutes, and seconds are gone. Okay. And there's no adding new things. There's no adding local things. It doesn't happen. It just can't happen because there's, the focus is on, you know, the core set of standards. Okay, but would you be, and I bet you're not opposed to any, uh, some kind of a test to say, yes, this kid is ready to graduate because they've learned these basic things, some kind of a test. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, testing is, a, testing is about two important things, two intimate important things. It's about the student and the teacher, the teacher saying, is this child learning what I'm teaching it? And it's about the, the teacher and the parent, is your child learning? Because parents, of course they want to know that. Their child is in school. They want to know, is my child learning and how well are they learning? That's all that testing should be about. We have departments. We have people getting PhDs in testing me mechanisms and, you know, all of these because we've created this whole system. And this new federal bill is test obsessed obsessed, Glenn. They, they're doubling down on their obsession with testing um, for, for, you know, all of these accountability reasons. When really what testing is about, it's about something local, it's something intimate, it's between the teacher and the child and the teacher and the parent. Okay. And then, of course, you wind up, wind up with the risk of teaching to the test, which couldn't possibly get yeah. any worse than that. All right. Right. I've been talking with Amy Edmonds from Wyoming Liberty Group. You've written some really good articles, great articles on this. Where do people find your work? wyliberty.org, the Wyoming Liberty Group. Well, there you go. As always, thanks for coming on. Thanks, bud.